And now, welcome to the stage, Dr. Siddharth Rajan. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Siddharth Rajan. I'm a professor here at The Ohio State University in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, wide band gap semiconductor devices. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they are, uh, why we think they're so important, and then I'm going to show you a couple of highlights about, from our own research uh, over here. So let me start by talking about what these semiconductors are. So you see a chart out here. It shows uh, different semiconductors like silicon, gallium arsenide, and so on. And uh, you can see that as you increase the band gap, the breakdown field of these materials increases. And that's one property that we really want to use for many applications, and I'll talk to you a little bit about it in this talk. Uh, here at Ohio State University, we have a very large group of faculty and researchers working on wide band gap semiconductors. Uh, if you're interested in learning about all the things that are happening, uh, my email is right at the bottom right of the screen, so feel free to uh, send me a note. So uh, what are the applications of wide band gap semiconductors? Uh, one big one is power switching, energy efficient electronics for things like transportation, electric cars, solar, microgrid, and so on. Uh, and essentially what happens is the large breakdown field enables us to make transistors much smaller than we would be able to with something like silicon. And so that allows you to switch with a lot more efficiency and also switch faster and make the entire system much smaller and lighter. Uh, and so this is why a lot of companies are very interested in power switching electronics based on wide band gap. And there's a lot of interesting research still going on, not just with silicon carbide and gallium nitride, which are pretty well established, but also going to much larger band gap materials, which we call these ultra wide band gap materials. Uh, another big area that's of great interest, especially to DOD applications, is high frequency electronics for things like radar, com communications. Uh, and so uh, already gallium nitride is the technology of choice for a lot of high frequency applications. Uh, in the future, uh, going to even larger band gaps can actually allow you to get higher gain, higher power density than you can with the state of art. Uh, so here at Ohio State, we were recently awarded a large $7.5 million program from the Army Research Office to investigate how these ultra-wide band gap ALGAN devices can be used for frequencies above 90 gigahertz. And we're very excited to start working on that. So whenever we go to the large band gap, the other opportunities that open up, the first one is that you can now make, uh, generate photons in the visible and ultraviolet range. And so there's a lot of interesting applications in UV, deep UV, that have opened up with uh, the wide band gap and ultra wide band gap semiconductors. Uh, the large band gap also allows you to operate at much higher temperatures. So for things like extreme environment applications, high temperatures become important, and these materials are very useful for those. Uh, and finally, the, large, the higher bond strength allows you to use them in high radiation environments without, with much longer lifetimes than you would with conventional silicon electronics. So basically, uh, gallium nitride and other wide band gap semiconductors are useful for all of these really critical applications. And there is already an existing platform, production platform, and a supply chain that we can tap into. So next, I'm going to talk about a few research highlights from here recently here at Ohio State. Uh, the first one that we've been working on is uh, achieving these high breakdown fields that I talked about in a device. It turns out even though they had been, the materials themselves can actually sustain high fields in an actual transistor or a diode, it's not easy to sustain these fields. And so recently, we've been integrating these new materials like barium titanate into gallium nitride and gallium oxide, these wide and ultra-wide band gap devices. And we've actually been able to achieve the highest fields in a device for any semiconductor device, as high as 8.4 megavolt per centimeter, uh, which is literally, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's like 160 volts over 200 nanometer. The other thing we've been working on is UV LEDs. And one of the problems for these ultra-wide band gap materials is that it's very difficult to have holes and electrons. 
And we've been working on designing these new tunnel junctions, interband tunnel junctions, to realize this. Uh, and we've been able to get interband tunnel junctions at the largest semiconductor band gap to date. So I'll stop there, and I'll just leave you with the summary. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or look for me during the rest of the event. Thank you.